this morning. So please welcome Jason to the stage. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, my, my presentation is uh, today is about uh, to reduce the Zeek Dictionary uh, memory footprint. So, <clears throat> OK, a bit about myself. Mostly C++ developer, some side projects, Python, Java, Go projects. Still new, pretty new in this industry. So hello, everyone. So just the first year in this industry. I spent the previous 10 years in financial industry basically uh, building high frequency trading platforms. Basically, half of my time is like uh, just to make your program a little bit faster than the neighbor, OK? <laughs> in a set data center. So, so optimization kind of like a half of what, what my job is. Before that, I spent five years in a video chip startup. Before that, three years with Microsoft MS TV group. <coughs> so today's agenda. <clears throat> so let's say we found, a, we found a problem, a performance issue in the production. What steps will we follow? Just tr So the first one, we need to reproduce it, right? Looks, looks like it's already happening there. Looks like it's, well, it's easy. Probably that's the hardest step. So the second step is if you can reproduce fairly easily, I mean, in a short period, then try to profile it and to locate what are the problem areas. <clears throat> After you locate the problem, problem area, you try to understand in, in depth what cause, let's say here, there's some memory, memory uh, performance issue. Let's see what part of the, the program that uses a lot of memory. So once it's understood, then we try to put a fix in. Hopefully, there's a fix. Then we verify if it works or not. Let's say to compare, with, compare the new with the old. <clears throat> So first, to, uh, to reproduce. OK, the, the hardest part is to reproduce uh, the problem. So let's say uh, f the observation that we had that uh, Zeek grows in memory uh, over time in production, especially where there's a lot of SMB packets. So the goal to reproduce it quickly. So in production, probably, after two weeks, you see some, actually it goes about one gig, for example. Now you can't wait for two weeks, right? You have to reproduce quickly. Let's say in a few minutes, even in seconds, so you can reproduce constantly. Then you can attach stuff on it. The other part is try to reproduce consistently. Now, instead of have random packets that f you can reproduce, try to use fixed number, a fixed sequence of the same packets to reproduce it. That's really helpful afterwards for, for the next step when you actually provide it. So the first attempt is, let's say it's SMB. Let's say grab SMB torture from a, a Wireshark sample PCAPs. Just feed it to Zeek. Let's see what's happening. All right, not that easy. We couldn't reproduce the memory issue. That's, that's if life is that easy, right? So why? We lack some packet intensity. So let's say add some packet intensity there. So instead of feeding one PCAP, let's constantly feed in the same PCAP, serially. All right, so we have a tool to do that, which is called TCP replay. Probably everybody used it. All right, so, so that's, that's how we use it. Fit it a sample PCAP, use TCP replay. You can, then you constantly replay and loop, loop through the PCAP file. And it, at the same time, you can actually adjust the speed, how to play those packets. All right, and what's the result? Well, somewhat we can somewhat reproduce, but not as, just not quickly enough. What's the problem? Intensity is still not enough. 
Is there a better way? Yeah, there is. Okay, let's try to increase the intensity even more. Let's try to, try to play those packets in parallel. How, we, how do we do that? There's a tool, there's always a tool. There's a Cisco T-Rex which we use. Basically you feed a sample PCAP and it generates like a randomly IP port pairs, kind of, kind of like mix those PCAP files greatly. Then feed to the network. Then you feed to your Zeek. All right, that's cool. So with this we can, <coughs> we, okay, there's a problem here. So with T-Rex, it doesn't actually accept the PCAP, the sample PCAP, why? Because T-Rex is kind of picky where for the inputs, they all have to be of the same, same flow. So what can we do? That's, well, just develop a tool for it. Okay, create a small tool which is called PCAP splitter. Basically it splits the source, source cap, capture file into different flows. Then feed those flows into T-Rex. Boom, now you, you have T-Rex running. Yeah, you can reproduce in seconds. That's cool. So is there a problem? Yeah, we, we can reproduce it quickly, but can we reproduce consistently? So do, with this configuration, when, when we <coughs> reproduce it, it actually feeds random packets to our Zeek. It's, it's good you reproduce it, but uh, can we do better? Yeah, we can do better. So just modify the configuration a little bit. So on the other side, use TCP dump to record the intensified version, which I call intensified version of the sample, of the sample, SMP sample PCAP. Then feed those intensified uh, captures directly into Zeek. Boom, you just use dash R with a small PCAP you can reproduce the problem just in a few seconds. That's great. So this is the final solution, all right? So basically we've, we use SMB torture uh, capture as kind of like a seed, seed, seed PCAP. We generate the PCAP files, like generate the intensified version of those PCAP through split, <clears throat> so through split, then T-Rex, TCP dump on the other side and record them. So I basically record them in three, three files in different, different uh, packets, 10,000 packets, 100,000 and a million packets. Then we feed the PCAP file to Zeek directly. <clears throat> All right, so com accomplishing the first, first step. The second step is to try to profile it to see uh, to see the <clears throat> to see the heap who's using the memory, who's using who's the heavy user of the memory. So basically, most of the time, I guess everybody when you compile the if you compile the Zeek, mostly this is the default one that you are using TC malloc. So with TC malloc, there's actually a simple way to profile <clears throat> to profile the the memory usage. Now you have, have your Zeek with TC malloc enabled. Just run it with the environment variable heap profile equals Zeek. Boom, when you're running, it generates a series of snapshots, which is like a memory snapshots. <clears throat> By default, it generates every 100, every 100 Mac memories that you use. <clears throat> There's an even better way to do that. There are a few knobs that you can control. So first knob is you can control it. So basically those knobs are help you to control when the snapshot is generated. Instead of probably you want to generate the, you want to generate the snapshot when it reaches one, one gig, right? When you allocate new one gig memory, then you use this interval Set it to one gig, then when it 
a new one gig memory is allocated, it will generate a, a snapshot. <clears throat> or if you want, a, want it otherwise, you want to m measure your like high water mark. So when Zeke uses extra, extra, 100, extra 100 megabytes, generate the snapshot. Well, it's configurable. You can configure the end number. Or, well, I'd like just generate the snapshot every hour if you want. Then I, I, I can measure it by time. You can do that. That's even a better way where you can actually generate on demand. So you have, this is probably, I haven't tried it, but probably you can try to run it in production. Basically, most of the time, it's when it doesn't generate, so it, there's a little performance hit. But you feel something's not right, right? You want to see the, you want to dump the memory usage profile. So you just send a signal to, to your ZIC with TCP malloc enabled. Then it will start dumping the stuff. So this is, this is cool. I just figured a few days ago, right? So this is nice stuff. So now you have your snapshot file. You need to, pro, you need to analyze it, right? So, <clears throat> well, with TC malloc, you have a default way to analyze it, which is Google P proof. Is that a better way? Well, with, uh, in, short, in a short while, I show you how you use, use that tool. That's even a better way. So probably less known, but uh, I guess everybody knows when you do profiling, there's a, few, there's a few ways. Like the major way is use well, well grind, right? So that's, but it's so slow. But it has a, a good tool chain. So uh, Kcash grind is like a, belong to those tool chain. You can actually use this tool, just have a tweak so that that tool can actually read, uh, read your snapshot profile. So you can analyze it better. So this is how you use uh, Google P proof. Well, it's a tree. It's, I guess, uh, Justin <clears throat> uh, presented the other day. It's a tree, so start from man, you'll see, okay, what, uh, what, memory each, uh, what memory each function uses. So, okay, what is the better way? The better way is, let's say, if you, if you see the whole picture, this is what man allocates. It, within the man, you can you actually, actually see what are the heavy users of the memory. It's kind of like actual snapshot of the whole memory. And the boxes, the size, si the area of the boxes represents the memory that each function are using. So from this one, immediately you can see that, well, I'm feeling the SMB. So you see that a big memory user is SMB protocol parser. And uh, some TCP analyzer stuff, some, some like internal stuff. And from here, I have this yellow box. You see the dictionary part actually it's surprisingly consumed like a big part of the memory, right? So that's something of interest. Let's see why it uses so much memory. So kind of like a, that's one of the potential problem that I uh, spot. All right, so, okay, so that's, that's the dictionary. Let's look into it. So, Actually, Zeek uses a lot of a lot of dictionaries, around a hundred, around a thousand uh, for the core. So, for event engine and uh, script engine, and the huge part of those dictionaries are actually used by the scripts. So, where you define, like for example, if you define a table, it actually a dictionary inside. Even when you define a set, it's a, a dictionary inside. So those are some st stats. So from here, again, I'm feeding three different PCAP files into Zeek. You see, it's so surprising, right? So feeding just with 100,000 packets, it generates almost half a million dictionaries. That's so surprising. Feeding a bit more is three quarters of a million dictionaries. 
and how much memory it, it uses. Let's say for, for just feeding a million, it uses 250 MAC of memory. Is that big or not? All right, the, the whole application uses this much. It's like actually 15%. So if we can improve some memory usage for the dictionary, it will have an impact on the overall application. So all right, so they use a lot, lot of huge number of dictionaries. Dictionary is like a big part. Now can we improve? So if I have a statistic here. For each key, each entry, the current dictionary actually uses quite a bit of memory. For one entry, it's like 500 bytes. With this one, even 600 or 700. So it looks like there's some room for improvement. Right, so, well, I think a few hundred, 100, probably reasonable, but 500, that looks like a bit more, a bit too much. So before, before we dip into it, let's have some stats about the sizes of the dictionary. It's just another surprise. It uses lots of dictionaries, and most of the dictionaries are really, really tiny. Like, the other, just to mention that there's just Half of those dictionaries you create it and it's never used. And almost 40% with only one item. So basically, less than 1%, like 0.1%, 0.4%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 0.5%, 
which now the index in the bucket is different because the same bucket we will have, we occupy different indexes. And we have a distance uh, column which actually uh, tells you how, how far away of your index from your bucket. <coughs> you, you'll see from the example. So let's put the first one, 10. All right, 10. So 10 is index zero, bucket zero, right? That's easy. It's, so the distance is zero. What about 11? That's the cluster, so that's what I call cluster zero. It's kind of like the bucket zero, but uh, anyways. So now put the one, uh, put the 11. 11 is bucket, bucket, uh, bucket one. So let's say we have bucket one. We put the 11 in, so the, the distance zero. Now we put the other one. This is one now, so that's, that's something of interest. So the bucket is one. So I, I have to put it into index two, so the distance is actually one from it. So it's, let's say for the rest. So 12, let's put 12 in. That's cluster three, uh, cluster two. So that's some interest. So cluster two is not actually starting from index two, because index two is occupied by the previous, by other clusters. So let's say we just put it flat footed in, adjust uh, the distance accordingly. So this is seven, so that's empty space here because no, no items. For the seven, we put seven because it's empty. All right, that's cluster seven. And the rest. So we just put everything into the table. Let's review it. So basically with this table, we have two more columns in, uh, in the uh, bucket and the distance. So again, with uh, this color coding, you, you can easily see that uh, each each cluster, they cluster together, they start from, from its bucket or after. So no spaces, there's no spaces inside, no spaces between its bucket and its cluster. So to accommodate, there's like overflow areas. So basically if you have some more at the end, then put here. With this data structure, let's see how we, how we look up. So it's, it's actually pretty straightforward. Let's say for 22, first you look up, you find the bucket. 22, the bucket is two. So you start from me next two. So then the next, take a look at its bucket column. So you are in bucket two. This bucket one, that's not one, don't look. So the next, that's bucket two. Then you compare. The key is in the right. Okay, that's 2022 20, is here. Then you find it, the index is four. So let's look up something that's, uh, that doesn't exist. 42, again, bucket is two. You look at cluster two, so you start from two. So then you look at the bucket column, one, ignore, two, compare, 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 nothing. Then you, you reach uh, empty space. That means it's the end of the cluster, one of the conditions. So it's not found, so you get index six. Six is, is when you, you can't, find the, can't find the item, what, what it returns is the insert position. So if you want to insert 42, you insert as six. That helps to the next uh, algorithm of insert. 
So basically, you, you look at first, if you find that's easy, you just replace the value. Let's say if you don't find, you get, a, you get an insert position, which is, for example, you've inserted 50, the insert position is one, because it is, actually it is the end of your cluster. It's the end of the cluster. So you insert, you always insert at the end of your cluster. Now how do we insert it? Because there's already an item here, right? It's not empty. You need to do something about it. So how do we do that? Let's do some reallocation. We move, move the one to, its, to a new place. So let's say we move 11 from the head, it's the head of its cluster, this cluster one, right? To the end of its cluster. Too bad, the end of its cl cluster, still there are some items here. Then you need to do the same thing for that, uh, for, for, for this one, you need to reallocate 12 from its head of cluster to its cluster two to its end of the cluster. Now we're lucky, okay, it's empty, so you can't do that. So just move it there, then you empty the space, then you moved, then you moved here, then you, you get the empty space, now you can insert. Huh? Now you can insert. Well, you, at the same time, you adjust the distances accordingly. So it's kind of straightforward. Let's see how, we, how do we remove it, remove item. For example, remove, let's say remove 11. Now you do look up obvious first. If you can't find it, you don't need to remove anything, that's easy. Now if you find an index, let's say 11, that's index one, that's index one, you need to remove it. Oh, that's, it's straightforward, just remove it, right? Make, make the item empty. Sorry. So now you have an empty space here. Now let's see if we can improve on the next cluster. So this cluster is one, so the distance is not zero, so that, that means it's not, we can improve it. If we move it up, we can improve in this cluster to make it shorter. The distance is shorter. So we can actually, let's, this is one. It's actually when we move, it's the end of the cluster. We, we move the end of the cluster to its head of the cluster. Now we have another empty space here, right? Empty space. We look constantly to the next one to see the cluster here, can we improve? So for this one, the the distance is one, that means we can improve. It's not zero, so it's not ideal. To improve, we move the last one to be the, to be the head of this cluster. Just move once. So we move this one back, then we look can we, can we move again? We have empty space here. Okay, the next one is empty, so there's nothing to, to optimize here. Now this is the end of the algorithm. It's, it's straightforward, but uh, when you insert, when you remove, you do have to somehow shuffle, shuffle through a, a little bit of the existing items. Well, there, there are more, there are more uh, uh, algorithms, details with this, with this new dictionary. So if you're interested, I have pointers here. You can read in post format. So all right, let's see, okay, I kind of have a new implementation of the dictionary. Let's see, let's try to verify if it's better or it could, could it be worse. So, all right, so, so to me, let's see how much space that is saved. And, well, we know not, nothing is free in computer world. Now if we save space, will we sacrifice the speed? That's kind of important. 
or how much we sacrifice. First, let's take a look at the memory. So as we can see, that's the first one, first column, the uh, first, uh, first row is the old dictionary. So this is, I just take an example with the connection dictionary. So with the old one, with the chained one, for, for one item, it uses around 500 bytes. With this new one, it uses 136. It's almost just a quarter of the memory. Right? It saves a lot of memory. Now with 10 items, it's a third. Now when it grows, when the, the tables becomes bigger, the savings become smaller. That's kind of obvious. But remember that most of our dictionaries are small, so less than 10. So from here you can see that the actual improvement overall should be between 1 and 10. So it should be between these two numbers. Let's see. Is it correct? So memory of all dictionaries. So this is just running the program, collect the memory of uh, the used by all the dictionaries. So before, it uses like for example, fitting different packets. For example, fitting 10,000 10, packets before it uses 13 meg. Now it only uses four meg, only 30% of the memory. If we fit more, it uses even less, the, the comparison, only a quarter. So, so the memory improvement is quite, quite amazing. So the impact to the overall application, so how, how much does it actually save of the overall application? Still, it saves quite a bit, just the dictionary. Overall, it saves six to 10% overall. For this one, saved 170 meg of memories. So when you're running the normal uh, Zeek, you probably use a, a gig, around a gig or something. So you can actually, I think you can actually, the actual number is some, somewhere here. Well, this is stress test, okay? It's different pattern of the packets. So that's the difference. So next question we would like to, to see, okay, is will it be at the expense of the speed? Let's take a look at the speed. So the time of the, of the, of the speed, uh, the time, time of a single dictionary by size. So surprisingly, it, surprisingly when the, uh, when the dictionary is a medium size, like a thousand, they're like, uh, the, the speed is comparable. When the dictionary becomes smaller, the new implementation is actually faster. The, uh, the red one is the new one. So it's actually faster. That's kind of a bit surprising, right? So we say so we even make it even faster. Now when the dictionary is huge, it's also faster, like 30% faster. Why? That's because we are removing the pointers, the indirection of the address. When the dictionary is small, you have this, uh, this indirection actually takes a big chunk of the overall, uh, overall operation, right? Probably 30% of overall operation used for the address in direction. So if you remove that part, it will be faster. Now, when the dictionary, become, become, uh, the dictionary becomes larger, then in direction becomes the smaller parts of the overall, application, overall operation, so the savings become smaller. Now, why it becomes, the savings become larger when the dictionary is huge? Again, that point in direction, now it causes a different effect, which is cache misses. We can't afford cache misses. When you have a cache miss, that's around 100 nanoseconds. That's almost the whole operation of the, whole operation of a lookup, of a, of a removal, removal or insert. So then you'll see that big improvement again. Let's see what about uh, the other parts, the lookup. It's similar. So there's one thing, uh, one thing, one weird thing there, it's actually slower in this one. So that's because of a special effect. 
where, where we're using uh, incremental resizing. It's kind of, when it's this size, it's kind of like in a special uh, transitory, transitory uh, period. It's resizing its dictionary. Then why, this, why the, the old one is faster? Because it resizes in other sizes. So it could be it's hidden, it's slower there. So it's, it's similar for the other operations. So basically, it's, overall, it's faster. So uh, if we can measure the time of the, all the dictionaries, now, that's hard. I didn't find a good way to, to measure that. But the estimate is, since all the dictionaries are small, so I, I think it's probably the overall uh, Speed, speed uh, improvement is like 30%. Now we can, we can actually see the savings over, of overall application, uh, performance savings. So this is the, the old one. So this is the new one. It's a little bit tricky, but uh, we can actually. Uh, it actually saves some time overall, like 4% to 6%. So that's not bad. I mean, you save the you say you, you save the memory like you use only use a quarter uh, you only use a third of the memory and you boost the speed that's like a, it's perfect in both words that's that's interesting that's cool so yeah that's about it thank you very much any questions <clears throat>